In this video, we're going to focus on how to change and control the size or the width and the height of the chart. This might be sometimes confusing for many. And even if you can see here, we have this part. And if I put this on 5,000 pixels, if I save this, for some reason, our chart in ChartJS is stubborn and doesn't respond. We can go even down here. We have 5,000 pixels, but for some reason, it doesn't respond. So we're going to explore how we can increase the size, decrease the size, adjust the size of the chart and the shape of it as well. So let's explore how to do this. In this video, we're going to focus on the, one of the viewers question, which is how to make the chart bigger on the site in ChartJS. So this question, as you can see, the complexity of, uh, complexity of this question is probably more a starting person who is just starting out with ChartJS. And that would mean that I probably have to talk more about the basic foundation, which I want to focus on here. Then normally I would skip that and I would say just copy paste this part of my website. So let me first show you and then afterwards we're going to break it down. So first of all, this was in one of my other videos here, we're going to create an interactive line chart in ChartJS3. And what happened here eventually was the following. I have this chart here big, but eventually if we move on here somewhere, you'll see the chart is small. And that might create a certain level of confusion or some questions from how do we enlarge the chart, all right? So if I scroll down here, this question came from Reese Bell. So first of all, Reese, thank you very much for asking the question. And next, I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to do it. Normally, I would say, go to my website here and grab this code here. But now I would say, don't do that. I want to show you the structure that we're going to get from the ChartJS documentation. And I'm going to break it down in very foundational elements. So you have an understanding of it, and then you also understand why and how and why you have to do it the way you do it or the way I'm doing it here. So first of all, go to chart yes. And what I'm going to do in chart yes here is you're going to grab a chart and I realize that uh, here we have the chart part, but I just need to have a fixed HTML part. So I'm going to grab a basic HTML structure here. So I just grabbed my basic HTML structure, which is nothing fancy, it's just HTML, hat, a head tag, uh, the meta text, whatever needed, the title, the body, that's it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use this default structure and then we go in here in ChartJS in the latest, which is the latest version, which is ChartJS 3.4.1 as of now. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab just this chunk of code here. It says here, creating a chart, just grab all of this or there's a button here. Let's click on that, we can copy all of this. Paste this in here and then what I want to do is here, I want to here to getting started. And in getting started, I'm going to grab this link here. This is here, our chart.js uh, JavaScript library. And then we have this, I'll give this proper indentation. All right, to answer your question very quickly, basically you can see here, this part here, remove this. Remove this, and then you have the canvas ID here. What you have to do here is to nest this in here. So once you nest this in, I want to give this a class. You do this because you want to avoid that the canvas doesn't scale into infinity. This will mean that sometimes the chart, if it doesn't have a specific height and width, it, it will just keep on growing. And you maybe don't want to use it in here with the height and width, height this, when you put in a value, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to use CSS for that. So we're going to create a class in here. So we say here, chart box. And in this chart box here, I'm just going to put in here a style tag. And then I will say here, dot chart box. And then we can put in here the size. So I'm going to back here and just refresh. You can see here, now by default, it grabs 100%. And sometimes it might scale into infinity, especially if we remove these. But if you want to increase or decrease it, in the other video, there was a width set on 400 pixels, save that. You can see it's like this. And if you want to change that, you can do any amount of pixels, of course, here based on that. 700, 100%, whatever you want here, but make sure it's nested in. So basically you make this big, or you give this a specific dimension, and this will follow along. Just a just, uh, just one quick note here, which is very important. This here has a canvas ratio. So if I go in here, let's search here for the canvas ratio. Maybe it's in the configuration. 
Uh, the, probably this one here, the aspect ratio, device pixel ratio, no, do I have it here, responsive chart, let's see here, the responsive, maintain aspect ratio, alright, so the maintain aspect ratio basically does the following, it will grab a ratio of, if I'm not mistaken, 2 to 1, so if I open up the developer tab, you can see here, right now, the size, you can see here the height is 700, or the width is 1400 well this is not really accurate however the official size as you can see here in css is 700 by 350 meaning two to one the width is two pixels while the height is one pixel and you can control this as well so if that would be necessary that's fine as well however in a pie chart or a donut chart and and probably the polar chart and the ra uh, radar area chart you will have a pixel of one to one ratio, meaning that this is square by default. You can control this by adjusting it in here. For example, here, let's double check here. We are going here in the responsive configuration. You can see here the options. This is the namespace options. And then it says you can indicate here, maintain aspect ratio, yes or no. And then you can indicate that. So we can say here option. Oh, we are in the options, all right. Just grab the aspect rate, maintain aspect ratio. In the options here, maintain expert ratio, and then we said here on false, comma. If we save this, now it will just do whatever it pleases to do. And of course, you can say here a specific height. If your height would be here, very small, you will have a very narrow chart, as you can see in here. There you are. So this is the most important part we're going to the size here you can control that and you control it here as well what i want to show you as well because this is really because you're still starting out so i feel like this is also not a part that's important in the chart yes documentation especially once you move on here you will go to what we call the blocks so we go here or then yes this is the one if i'm not mistaken and then you have seen these blocks here setup config block and then we have here the render block all right, so what I want to do here is just to make sure you understand this, I'm going to break this down, what we have here, into these blocks. The reason why I'm doing this is Chart.js documentation is moving towards this. Understanding this part is crucial for you because it will help you in the future to understand the samples in Chart.js. And I'm sure that in a, in a very soon or in a short period, they will remove the default structure and they will just put in that. So understanding the official structure where the documentation moves is a benefit for you so what we're going to do is we're going to break down this chart and we're going to break it down into three blocks and this is the setup block you have the configuration block and finally we have the initialization or render block and so what we're going to do in here is we're going to move stuff between here to do this we have to first work with the setup block the setup block consists consists of all the data so we say a const data equal and then we have these curly braces, semicolon. So between here, we're going to grab everything within the data. So, so you see here, this is the data. And so we have to work from here, the labels, all down to here. As you can see, we don't need these, this part here. This part is essential for another block. All right. And then we paste it all in here. So now we have this. We're done here. The next one is the configuration block. So the config block just has the same methodology. Oh, make sure you have here the constant equals, and then you can see here the curly braces. Semicolon. And in here, we're going to grab the skeleton or the, the foundation part of chart.js, which is the type, which indicate the type of chart, the data, and the options. So we're going to grab this, cut all of this out, paste it in here. So in here, I'm just going to put this nicely and pop an indentation. All right. As you can see here, we have the maintain expert ratio. All right. This, this, this. There we are. And most likely, am I correct? Are we? Oh, wait. Sorry. My indentation here was incorrect because the skills and these are on the same level. The maintain expert ratio. There we are. So once we have this, what I want to do here is the data. So I'm going to remove this, and what we can do is the following. We can say here data, data, comma, and the reason why is because if we have here data as a constant, then data equals data. 
But if you would have, for example, another one, which would be a constant, which is data2, then we need to say data equals data2. Because charge, sorry, not charge yes, this is what you call a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the object destructuring. And that would mean the following. It can destructure in ES6. We have a structure in here where you can short, we have a shorthand using just a comma here. So data, this, if, as long as data equals data, if there would be another variable or another constant, you need to write it out data equals that specific constant. All right. So we've got all of this now here. We have all of this. The next one is the final part, which is eventually here, the initialization block. And in this initialization block, we'll say here, we will grab my chart. And I'm grabbing my chart here for one reason is because in here, we have the ID name. And I like to use this here so it's easy to find. So we say here, constant, my chart. And then just put a space here, equal. And then we create here a constructor. We say new chart with capital C, parentheses, semicolon. Pay attention, this is parentheses and not curly braces. Because we're creating here a JavaScript constructor. And in this JavaScript constructor, we're going to grab this chunk of code. And the reason why we only grab this and we don't need this one is because in the constructor, it is already given. It understood this. It is intelligent enough to figure this out as there's a code or a block built in. It understands that it already grabs this part. So no need to worry for this. So we can remove that one now, and then we say comma, and what we say here is config, and the config is exactly the same as what we did with data, and because the config equals config, or the configuration, that's it. So what happens here now is basically, we will initialize the chart, but to initialize, we are dependent on this constant, which is the the, the, the conf configuration data, or com sorry, the configuration block, and in this configuration block, we have a data, which is a constant, and this, so meaning that this is this config block is dependent on the data block, which is in here. So this is the entire structure, really broken down into a very logical step. So if I save this now, go back in here, we have all of this here. If we want to adjust this, we can make this uh, 500, so it's like slightly bigger. There we are. Now we have a slightly rectangular shape. Of course, if you want to change this again, on false, we can just comment this out, remove that. By default, it is set on true, by the way, so you don't have to worry about this. So then you can see, no matter, even if you indicate a height, the height will be overruled by this option here, which is set on true by default. So it has a default value. So this will not work no matter what, even if you would say this 1,500. As you can see, nothing works. However, the width here, is working it's responsive to this and so you can control it here this that 100 percent whatever you want here you have a lot of freedom to do as you please so this is so far the entire breakdown i hope it was clear and i really broke it down in everything what you can imagine that you really need to know but if you do have any questions regarding to this or anything else just put them in the comment section below Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.